I'm Rico and the business is Glowy Pure Honey. Uh, my business entails buying raw honey from farmers and then processing it into a liquid honey that we pack and sell. Uh, from the raw honey we get uh, also wax, these wax that we also sell uh, to cosmetics companies and individuals who make candles and stuff like that. I started 2017 pretty much as just a side hustle to supplement my earning but then uh, it is from 2019 that I picked it up as really a, a business. Our honey is the best. We have the best weather so the bees drive here and what they give you is really pure and raw and, and very beautiful honey so they should get a chance and test the honey as well. Thanks. Thanks to the Yali Exchange Program, Alumni Exchange Program. Uh, the truth is, we do business, but we don't pay attention to the nitty gritties, and that usually costs us in terms of sustainability, because along the way things get messy and you're not able to track where did you go wrong. So for me, this course really has been a very beneficial thing, and I hope the next time we're meeting, we should be talking about different things in terms of growth and progress we've made from the time the course was done. Let's hear for Glowy Honey. Thank you. Glowy well, Pure Honey will give you a great test of health. Um, in 2017, a friend requested that I send her honey because she was retailing honey, honey in Kampala. And because West Nile honey is widely known as the best honey. And I would basically walk to the streets there and buy honey and send. But one fateful day, I sent her honey. And it turned out the honey was adulterated. And when she called and expressed that disappointment, it affected, touched on my integrity. Because I was not sure whether she trusted my word that I was not the one who adulterated the honey. So I decided from that time, why don't I venture into honey business so that I can control the quality I send the people and I remain accountable for them. So many retailers, other than her, we realized over the years, struggle with access to affordable high quality honey. Okay, our pure honey helps our wholesale customers who want to consistently retail high quality and affordable pure honey to their customers by reducing availability challenges and increasing access at affordable prices. Our solution, now we ensure that we manage the entire process such that we can still give quality. So, picture number one is where the apiary units of the farmers are. And so we buy honey from them, which is packed in an airtight bucket. Once we get the honey, it is processed in this machine here. Uh, I don't own the machine, but I have an agreement with the owner of that processing unit because it's quite a, a heavy uh, investment to make. So once we process it here, then I move it to my packaging room. Uh, so this is where we pack the honey and then eventually brand it, ready for sale. So our market opportunities, our total available market is all honey customers in Uganda. Our serviceable market is the all honey retailers in Uganda. But our target market is just 30% of the retail, of the retailers of honey in that's the segment that we're trying to target. What are our channels of getting reaching out to our customers with our product? These direct sales, where we sell directly to them, but also we use referral methods. Our retail, uh, our customers who buy as an individual, we try to turn them into retailers because we believe that our prices still give them an edge to retail and still make a profit. So we're turning our customers into business people, but as customers for ourselves. Customer relationship, 
personal relationships by calling by use of social media that they are able to reach out to us facebook and whatsapp uh, where we are able to respond uh, not long time ago in this class we learned and now we are calling up our customers actually every time we send you honey then loyalty program we are beginning to appreciate our customers who have journeyed with us over that yes standardization we have been able to now acquire a weighing scale because honey is weighed in kilograms so Sometimes somebody is getting 1.2 kilograms in that liter. Sometimes it's 1.3 because you're using a jar. And that usually causes them losses the other, the other end. So we're trying to standardize. And then unbundling, we are trying to offer. Initially, our wholesale used to be 20 liters. Now we are doing wholesale at 10 liters as well. Such that this customer who says, I don't have 280, can begin with 140 and still grow the business. And then cross-sell, we have now introduced new products uh, like propolis, tincture, to, to, as an addition to the honey, and hopefully we'll have more other products introduced. Uh, our churn rate, we realized about 3% of our customers who don't come back. And uh, the lifetime of our customers is found it to be about 33 months. And then the lifetime value of a per customer relies on average is about 10, uh, 10 million. Revenue streams and cost structure. Uh, the darker red is revenue, then the, the orange bar is the cost. Uh, in the current year, we have raised about 44 million in revenue, but we've spent close to 35 million. In year one, we are as a projection we are projecting to make about 60 million in revenues but about 44 going in, in costs and then year two we are projecting to make about 82 million and uh, costs about 66. year three we feel these other years we would have sorted so many other impediments we should be hitting about 120 million revenues and about 84 million in costs Competitive analysis, we basically have Malaika Honey, Honey Pride, Happy Works, who go through the same process we undertake to get that quality honey. Now the parameters we're looking at is prices, quality, and convenience. But uh, Malaika Honey, in terms of pricing, is very high. Because partly, because they're able to export. And they're used to the higher prices. Uh, quality they are thick and convenience the kind of customers we are targeting they do not make deliveries to them and honey pride also the same thing their target markets are international markets so the local Ugandan retailers don't stand a chance in terms of pricing with them so that's where we feel okay we can rightly compete with them our timelines, 2022, we've practically been working around staffing. I used to be alone, but now we're about three staff with a new addition of a delivery person, because delivery is our biggest expenditure. So we bought a bike and someone delivers. Uh, so we have the operations assistant, and then we have the marketing and branding person, and then myself, who is that? Uh, managing director so we are hoping that by the end of 2022 we would have sorted our staffing challenges 2023 we want to do market development because now what happened where we have six consistent customers who give us 80 percent of our revenue so 2023 we're saying okay if we multiply the six by 30 we would basically blow off uh, 2024, we want to now go backwards and work on supply capacity, expand outreach to many more honey farm, bee farmers, beekeepers, such that we can, we can have as many. Uh, what we need, what is our ask? Make a decision to get to consumer honey and get yourself a great test of health. We'd love to have a financial support to build a sustainable 
supply capacity, particularly working with farmers who have quite strong quality issues. Mentorship support in product development with international market standards. Our team, Lucky Amoni, uh, finished school level. She's the operations assistant with, assistant with three years experience. Francis Adrico has Bachelor of Business Administration. She's the branding and marketing girl. Three years experience. Gloria Vico, Master's Economics, Managing Director, four years experience. Our Facebook page, our contacts are there. You can reach out to us anytime. Thank you. We have time, maybe one minute for questions. Do you have any questions? Yep. Blow if you are honey. Like, now is your time to give some feedback. Uh, thank you, Blowy. Uh, my question is simple, and uh, you already said brandy. Are you going to be a subscriber? Uh, we are not certified. <laughs> However, no, how, we started the process, that's why we are now processing that side. They actually have told us we can use that facility to process. As long as now, or now, branding is processed by whatever you need. But we've started the process already. Then uh, the second one is, uh, if you have started the process, I think uh, they are not so sure of that, but I'm so sure of uh, the process in Nigeria. Whereby uh, it's a good product, yes. you have to go through another, not only the UNBS, there is another UNBS, something, what was it, so difficult to make sure that this product is uh, safe for human consumption. Uh, it's UNBS and find out if there is also NBA needs to approve that. Um, actually, no, UNBS sent the professor in food science there. My place at the time. It's only UNBS that actually does it. Yeah, no other questions. Give it up once again for Glory. Thank you so much.